Hey what's up everyone, Danny here. This is the next budget build video and it's going to be completely different than all the other builds I've done up to this point because in this one I'm only going to be using brand new components. This is something that's been requested a lot ever since I started the channel but I've been putting it off because the price to performance in the used market is just way better. But having said that, I do understand that there is a place for me to do brand new builds on this channel and that's because some of my viewers can't afford their own computers so they have to look either towards their parents, maybe a grandparent or a sibling to help them buy the parts. And when this is the case, I can totally see used parts being out of the question because there's no guaranteed warranties and places to get used parts like eBay and Craigslist are kind of known for scams, especially if you're not experienced in doing that. So when the money's not in your hands, I can totally see uh, you know, you having to gravitate towards only new parts so that you can minimize the risk. So with that said, um, you know, we're going to try to start doing more brand new builds on the channel and we're going to start with this one. So let's see how my deal hunting does when I'm only limited to brand new parts. These are all the parts that I used in the build. I'll go over each part, discuss why I chose it, and provide proof of pricing. This will include taxes, cost of shipping, and savings due to mail and rebate. I know some of you out there hate rebates, but you can save quite a bit by doing them, and I've shown plenty of times in the past with previous builds, as well as in my own personal system, that you can cut the cost if you cut those UPC codes and send them in. So do your rebates and save yourself some money. But now, onto the parts. This build will send around the Intel Pentium G4400. I got it at Fry's for $36.14 after tax. This was a really good sale price, but it wasn't a one-time lucky find. It's hit this price multiple times in the past, and it's hit around $50 quite often during lesser sales. Even if you can't find any sale at all and have to pay the base price of $65, it's still not bad considering that it comes in at around half the cost of the next i3 processor. Another good option that you can consider is the Haswell G3250A, which sometimes goes on sale for around $50, and this is really good because you can overclock it with even the cheapest of 1150 motherboards. Technically, the G4400 is locked, but it can unofficially be overclocked if you have a certain flash Z170 motherboard, but we'll save that topic for a future video. The reason I didn't go with an AMD processor is because nothing in the sub $40 price range, even on sale, would have given similar performance, and the upgrade path would have been pretty limited. When it comes time to upgrade, I can easily sell this G4400 to recoup the cost, and then grab an i3 or an i5 chip. I paired it with the Gigabyte H110 Micro ATX motherboard. I definitely went for the most basic and low end option here since I won't be doing any overclocking. And I went with the Micro ATX because I originally wanted to do it in a Micro ATX tower, but you'll see when we get to the case that my mind changed halfway through buying the parts. There was no sale involved in buying this one, and I got it at a pretty standard price of $46.98. I kind of had buyer's remorse afterwards though because the following weeks after getting it, Newegg had one going on sale for around $35 after rebate. The graphics card that I chose for this build is the PowerColor RX460 2GB model. There are quite a few options with similar performance like the R9370, uh, that would have been a good alternative or on Nvidia side there's the GTX 950 or the 1050 but you know it depends on what you can find on sale at any given time. Generally speaking though the RX460 goes the lowest of the bunch. I ended up grabbing this one for $89.48 with a $15 rebate bringing it down to $74.48. I had a little bit of buyer's remorse on this one as well since it hit $60 on two separate occasions afterwards. For the RAM, I got a single stick of A-Pacer DDR4 at 2133MHz. For the most part, I always go for the lowest price RAM. I don't really dabble in overclocking RAM because the gains are minimal, so we're going to go bargain bin here. This won't be a build for aesthetics, so we're not going to try to match any colors here or grab any fancy heat spreaders. It may be ugly, but it has a beautiful, beautiful low price of $26.99. At the time I grabbed this, anywhere from $25 to $30 was pretty typical for 8GB, but ever since then, RAM prices have skyrocketed, and it's kind of a fluctuating market, so if you're buying parts early, be sure to grab RAM when it's on the low for around $25 to $30. Now, let's talk storage. In my opinion, mechanical hard drives aren't worth buying brand new unless you're getting at least one terabyte. Anything less than that, and you're gonna be taking a hit when it comes to gigabytes per dollar spent. I went with the cheapest 1TB 7200 RPM hard drive I can find, which was this Hitachi one, and it came out to a very standard price of $43. This is also something that I could save money on since 1TB hard drives go on sale for as low as $30 to $35, but at the time of me looking, there was none available for that price. You may notice that it's a SATA 2 drive, which made it a tad bit cheaper. This was completely intentional as mechanical drives aren't going to exceed the SATA 2 3GB per second transfer rate. 
The power supply I chose was the Corsair CX430, which is 80 plus bronze rated. This power supply always goes on sale. And when I say always, I mean I've seen it go on sale probably every single month in the past year. At $15.99 after mail and rebate, it's a complete steal for low to mid-range budget builds. This particular unit gets a lot of unwarranted hate, and if you Google it, you will see what I'm talking about. Here's Johnny Guru and Oklahoma Wolf's take on this power supply. These guys are the experts, they have the proper equipment to test them thoroughly, and they give it a thumbs up. So you can go read on it more if you have any concerns. And last up is the case. Originally I wanted to do a micro ATX build, but this thing came along and I just couldn't pass it out. This is the Raid Max Strato ATX Mid Tower, and it only cost me $9.99 after mail and rebate. For this price, I was willing to have a slightly funny looking pair of a micro ATX motherboard in a mid-sized tower. I was glad that I was at least painted black and not just bare metal like cheaper cases usually are. The price is definitely reflected in things like the lack of a window, these punch out expansion brackets, and only having one single blue LED fan in the front. It does however have a pretty discreet handle at the top which doesn't shoot out, so I think it gets some points back for this. As a person who moves their PC around a lot, whether it be for testing or for going to LAN parties, I've grown to love cases with handles. When it came to building, everything went as expected with no hiccups. The strata was pretty average to build in, and I've definitely built in worse cases in the past. The back panel has a nice generous pocket that leaves a decent gap between it and the motherboard tray. So for people like me who are a bit lazy when it comes to cable management, this is really nice for stuffing the cables out of sight. So adding it all up, this build comes out to a grand total of $253.57. It booted up on the first attempt, and thankfully there are no DOA parts. You may have noticed that I didn't add in a price for the operating system, and that's because I'm going to go with the free option, Windows 10 Unactivated. It's as simple as downloading the install files directly from the Microsoft website, and then clicking the I don't have a product key button during installation. And that's it! You have a 99% fully functional Windows 10. The only thing is that the personalization is locked and a watermark randomly appears at the bottom right corner. But if that doesn't bother you, then you've got yourself free windows. If you do, however, have an extra $20 or $30, then you can buy an OEM key from a key reselling website like Kingwin. For the RX 460, I was able to achieve a 10% overclock on the core, bringing it to 1333 MHz. This actually surprised me because remember, this is with no 6-pin connector. And just to make sure, I checked the power draw from the overclock, and at full load, it never pulled more than 75 watts, which is the max output for PCIe x16 slots. And now, the most important part of all, the performance. I did a lot of benchmarking and tried to provide a variety of tests so that I can show exactly what this PC is capable of. I included synthetic benchmarks, AAA titles, as well as lighter esports titles. So be sure to keep an eye on the GPU and CPU usage with the on-screen monitoring uh, throughout each of these tests and see how well these parts pair together. But other than that, sit back, relax, and enjoy the benchmarks accompanied by Mancrotty's newest song.
So those were the benchmarks and I want to talk about a couple of things. The first one is the Doom run. As you notice, I ran that in OpenGL and that's because uh, even though Vulkan should have given me better results, every time I tried to load the Vulkan API, it would just completely freeze. I only learned recently that it's due to Vulkan not officially supporting dual core CPUs, but there is a workaround if you launch it with the following advanced settings. And I may do a follow up video so that I can compare the differences. During the GTA benchmark, I noted that I had to cap the frame rate at 40 frames per second. If I didn't do this, the G4400 just couldn't keep up and there was horrible stuttering as well as object loading issues. Capping it made it really smooth as seen in the benchmarks. And you know, it wasn't 60 frames per second, but it also wasn't dipping any. It stayed at a constant 40 FPS, which was really nice. Overall, I'm really happy with the performance of this build considering how much I paid and the fact that it was made with all brand new parts. Anyone looking to recreate this build or something similar should be able to push the price around the $300 mark pretty easily. And if you're patient like me and love to deal hunt, then you should be able to push even further down to like around $275. You know, if I can do it, then you can do it. But yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. So if you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, uh, feel free to check out the rest of my content. And if you enjoy what I create, then consider subscribing. But let me know down below in the comment section, if you had more budget for this build, what would you get first? I'm personally leaning towards an i3-6100 upgrade or a 250GB SSD. I know the SSD is not going to give any better, you know, benchmark performance, but it would be nice just to have for the quicker boot times as well as the quicker load times for daily use programs. Uh, I'm kind of stuck between the two and I want to know what you guys would do or if you would, you know, spend money on something else altogether. Other than that, uh, I just want to thank you all for watching and this is actually going to be the last video for the channel for the year 2016. The next video will be next Sunday and that's going to be the new year. So I look forward to seeing you in that video. But uh, yep, that will be it for this one. Bye.